What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Kickback Show. And I am your host, Sam Peligro, coming to you live from the Cider Sessions studios above the world-famous Two River Cider Company here in Sacramento, California. It is Taco Tuesday, September 28, 2021, and it is also National Sunday. So if you have a son like I do, hey, much love to everybody that's got a son. Right on. Parents rock. All parents rock. Right, right on. So it's been a while since we've been on the set here, and it feels good to be back. Feels good to be back with my production team. And uh, without any further ado, here they are. Here's producer Rob. Producer Marco, producer Jared, what is up, fellas? Yo, What's yo, up? yo. Right on, right on. Man, it feels good to be back, even though I know I've seen you guys over the uh, past few months. But it feels good to be back in this element and this form, you know? So anyway, so talk to me, man. What have you guys been doing? Robster, what's up? What have you been doing since the break? Working and working and working. Right on. Middle school band director. Yeah, yeah man. Hey, right on. You Middle did, school bro. band director. The job, In the house. The job <laughs> I've been trying to avoid my whole life. It found me. <laughs> gotcha. It, I like great, it, too. Man. Yeah, so that's why he's been busy, man. So that's good. That's good. It's been good. Right on. And uh, science guy, man, what you been up to, brother? Working, man. Yeah, living the living the uh, dream out here in Placerville and uh, getting a <laughs> lot of stuff done. Nice. Yeah, nice. man. And uh, Mosca, what's popping, my man? Que pasa, amigo? Oh, man, as soon as Rob got that middle school gig, I ended up taking his old gig, booking over at Two River Cider. Right so, on, man. Heck yeah. It was a nice little that's handoff. Good. That's good. So anybody out there that's want that wants to perform at the Two River Cider stage, get a hold of Marco Guerrero. Yeah. You know? So holler at him, man, if you want to play uh, here that guy, at no. the world Maybe. famous Two River Cider Company. So did you guys <laughs> go anywhere, like vacation, anything at all? I mean, did you guys um, do something or go anywhere? Rob. Did you guys go back home? Did anybody go back home? I went back home. I was in, well, we did a little trip, Albuquerque, uh, Las Cruces, El Paso. There's the camera. It's down there. <laughs> there we go. That's awesome, man. So you got to go hang out with some family and some friends down there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Right nice on. drive. Everybody had fun. A lot of time by the pool. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, as far as uh, Polygato Brass, we... uh. Remember, we filmed a video over That's at right. the Marina in Walnut Grove, man, back in July. So we filmed That's a video right. for an upcoming song that you can hear right now uh, called Khalifa Soul. It's an original that we wrote, and uh, that should be dropping um, hopefully here in the next couple months because it's going to be the side B to the vinyl release of Don't Me Misunderstood. So looking forward to that. And this video was also directed by Andrew Gaynor, and yes. uh, it's going to be awesome, man. It's all brass getting down right on, right on. So check it out, man. So as far as any concerts, man, have you guys gone any shows or has Red Dirt been playing as well the past few months? Played a couple shows. Played last week at the Green Room up in Plasherville. Okay, Venue okay. Up in Plasherville. And how was the turnout? It's good. Yeah, it's going good. Okay, okay. Small room, limited seating. You know, everyone's Excellent. playing safe. So, so, so crowds are actually coming out and... People are loving Having some fun. live music these oh, days. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. For it. Cool. Yeah, man. Because it's a, you, you, the concert experience is something that is always a cool thing. Always something to remember, especially like, you know, people think back to like, oh, the best concert I've ever been to was this, or my very first concert was that. Marilyn and, Manson. You know, Mar Marilyn Manson <laughs> Marilyn was your first Manson. concert. Actually, <laughs> oh, it was wow. actually DC Talk. Okay. Okay. So I went DC, DC Talk. Like, <laughs> what? <R> <laughs> rest. Maryland okay, okay, okay. So <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, I wasn't prepared for this one, Rob. Okay. All right. Hey, hey, so Jared, what was your first concert, man? Oh, Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones. What? Oh, nice. Yeah. How old were you? I was <laughs> 17. 17? That was your yeah. first show? First, first show. Yeah. Like real show? Now, let first me ask real you guys show without my parents. I'll so say your uh, first show, is that also the best <clears throat> concert you've been to? What would be the best one? Cake. It's not the first one. Not my, so no, definitely not the first one. Okay. Okay. 
Mosca, what about you, man? What was your first, and was it also the best concert? Oh, man, my first actual show was the El Paso Symphony Orchestra in elementary school. Ooh, I remember that. Boy. How old were you? Can we get a Henry Hill yeah for that one, man? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> crazy thing. One of, uh, one of our friends that we went to college with is... Uh, uh andy moran he's he's el paso or he was the el paso symphony orchestra director wasn't he excellent do you guys yeah. remember andy now no. now he's like doing bigger well, better yep. things he was the youth symphony youth symphony that's right but then like my first like unsupervised show was um my life was a thrill kill cult mm. Whoa. wow okay I was, okay i was in that you see and so so check this out so it's like my quote unquote first concert is one I was forced to go to with my mom. So everybody has something like that, right? So I went yeah. to it was like a Mexican singer or something like that. Ah, you're going with me to pay cool. So that was kind of like quote unquote my first one that I didn't want to go to, but my first one, like you know, like Marco said, the unsupervised one where I really was like in awe was BC Boys and Run DMC back yes, in the like mid, mid 80s, man. Awesome. And so oh. technically that's my first and best. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. for all these reasons. I mean, it was BC Boys and their license to ill hate it. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? And then obviously, Good stuff. That's raising awesome, man. it was just great, man. And it was like, wow, it was in an amphitheater in Cal Expo here in Sacramento. And it was just, whoa, shit, it was great. Yeah. Well, so, you won that. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know, so, oh, it was cool, man. Boys. So, so along the lines of that, I reached out to some people and asked them, what is the oldest concert t shirt that they currently own? So I had some people um, submit pictures of the uh, oldest concert t-shirts. Who do you want to start with? We got, we got Jared, shirt number Okay, so one. my buddy Jared Dutra. He's in Oklahoma, but I went to high school with him. Jeez. This is a, let me see here. here uh, I'll, 92 I'll KSJO Bay Area Day on the Green shirt back from 1999. And Sammy Hagar and Megadeth were the notable acts on that particular bill so yeah he still has that shirt from 99 so that's you're uh, rocking that shirt around town and people are going to be looking at you <laughs> right that's that's and so yeah he had somebody uh it's, it's, i think it was a uh, ginger lynn I th i'm not sure who that is he might be from the uh, the radio station back then signed it for him so that's kind of cool cool right there. so what is the uh the next shirt that we next got we got ted oh yeah so this is my buddy uh oh, ted Zelton, his wife lisa this is a prince t-shirt from a concert that was held at arco arena in sacramento damn so that is uh that's pretty cool back in 1997 they stayed so yeah we're getting older here Shoot. prince was uh right yeah bad mofo <coughs> right? this one is from francisco okay my buddy francisco cibrian over in the area now this shirt he um he's Loves had it lot. since <laughs> 1990 or 91 Woo! wow and this is a jane's addiction Ritual de la Habitual Tour shirt. And he uh, he said he saw the concert here in Cal Expo. And we just mentioned that to you a little bit ago. Cal Expo here in Sacramento. And so, yeah, man, look at that shirt, man. He so, went all Bruce um, Banner I'm wondering on that. If it used to be like <laughs> black and now it's like, you know, faded the way it Hold is. It man. So, yeah. Pretty sure he bought it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so the next one here, what do we got here, Mosca? Oh, let's go out uh, with the smoke out. All right. So this one's mine mm. right here, man. So I've had this since 2007. And the Cypress Hill Smoke Out, it was in San Bernardino. And I went over there with a good buddy of mine named Miguel. And it was cool, man. So you could see the lineup on that. that That's is, uh, great. Great lineup. Far out, man. And so just like any concert, it's a full day. It was a big festival. And then just really quick, funny thing that happened right there. So you see Limp Biscuit was on there, right? So obviously there's uh -huh. moshers all over the place. And, you know, I'm not much of the mosher. So my buddy ran across the mosh pit to get to the other side because, you know, we wanted to get up closer. So then it became my turn. So it's kind of like, you know, I've already had too much to drink and he's over here waving at me and I'm seeing it slow. Well, come on, come on. So I just book for it almost there. And I get sideswiped by this big <laughs> boom. And yeah, I got knocked the bleep out. Slam. It was fun though. <laughs> it was cool. It was pretty cool, man. It was pretty cool. Awesome. So yeah, man, that's my T-shirt, the oldest concert T-shirt. Oh man, I should have closed out with that one. I just skipped. So where's yours? Well, yeah, you got this you got one it. over here. Look, it's all like thin, and this was <laughs> way back. <laughs> that was a size large. Oh, <laughs> you said thin. <laughs> yeah, I was right on, that, guys. I was a 
Flaming Tsunamis. Some homies from way back in the day. That's uh, awesome. Were, I think they're from Connecticut. They're like a grindcore ska band. Excellent. And apparently, Excellent. this shirt's like super sought after. Like, I posted up on these, like, uh, somebody saw me with it way back in the day. They're like, oh, man, you know these guys? I was like, yeah, they stayed at my house. They're right. Like, oh, yeah, they're right, the best. Right. And apparently, they became a big deal. And uh, then they broke up. But somebody right. wants to buy a few people wanted to buy this shirt just because they're like that's awesome and this is probably like <laughs> it is a sweet shirt i think that's it's awesome. like maybe 20 years old wow when i was a size large <laughs> <laughs> now it'd be like a crop top you <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more skin than what you want huh <laughs> yeah oh man that's great that's great all right so coming up next is a science fact by our resident science guy. Take it away, science. Did you know that in some cultures, they put green, pow green chili powder in their shoes to keep their feet warm? It was rumored that certain Denver Broncos players had sprinkled cayenne chili powder in their socks before a football game against the San Diego Chargers in 1987. It was a uh, whiteout. The powder helped the players resist the numbing cold that came from the blizzard conditions at the Denver Stadium. Wow. Pretty Whoa. crazy. Wow. Okay. So, as if you go skiing, snowboarding, something this it's summer, chilly. this summer, this winter, <laughs> throw some cayenne pepper in there. Yeah, yeah. Put some chili on them socks this yeah. summer. <laughs> you know, with climate change, it could be this summer. Ooh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a. That's a whole other subject. Man, yeah. That, so, but right on. So, hey, man, I heard we have a guest this evening. Yes. You guys yes, hear about sir. that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. That's All right. right. So, this guest is a multi Grammy nominee and a Grammy winner. He's also produced for bands such as Oso Motley, Quetzal, Grupo Fantasma, John Lee Hooker. And this one I took out on, and we'll talk to him about this. Um, Faith No More. That is crazy, man. So before we bring him on, let's uh, play a little snippet of their of uh, Los Lobos' most recent tune, Native Son. All right, all right. So everybody, welcome the one and only Steve Berlin. What's going on, Steve? Howdy, everybody. Right on, man. I'm. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, much appreciative, man. And it's good seeing you again, sir. Likewise, back at you, man. Right on, right on. So hey, really quick, man. So uh, like I before I introduced you, it showed on there that you produce for Faith No More. Can you talk about that really quick? What is it? That you, I mean, was it a song, full album, or what did, what did you do? I, uh, I co produced uh, the Introduce Yourself album with uh, oh. We Care a Lot in uh, Chinese Arithmetic. And, oh, wow. We Care a Lot. Okay. So that is bad. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know it was, that. It was pretty bad. awesome. They're, they're, uh, they're, they are and were amazing. Uh, it was super fun. Um, Early in my career, obviously, so I didn't really know, uh, <laughs> know what I was doing, but they didn't know that. Um, uh, I'm still close with uh, with Mike Borden, the drummer. We st I still hang out with him every time I go to uh, – he lives in uh, Marin. So awesome. we hang out every time I go up there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was uh, – so it was right, I guess. It was between, uh, like, the first uh, Los Lobos um, EP and uh, Will the Wolf Survive. So okay. I was, I was, I, I had done a thing for Slash Records, and they had just signed them, uh, Faith and More to the to their first deal, and they said, well, you know, he's a record producer, let's get him on the deal. So it's, uh, it was me, and then uh, um, they brought with them an engineer named Matt Wallace, mm -hmm. who went on to produce this the, the big hit, you know, the the, uh, the what you call it, I forget, <laughs> their big hit and a couple yeah, other records. Like produced, uh, 
he produced uh you know he's had a really good career but it was uh he was incredibly talented and uh so we we shared production because he was like he had done so much work before i got there it was i felt bad you know claiming to produce it <laughs> yeah no wow that is man because you have yourself quite a resume man and it's it's i'm in awe when i just look at the stuff that you've produced and also been involved with so um prior to joining los lobos though so back then who were who were you involved with as far as like bands and so forth uh, uh before, before, before los lobos Oh, your way. <laughs> Los Lobos, I was uh, I was in a band called The Blasters for a couple of years. Awesome. It's, uh, you know, they're, that's kind of like more or less how I met Los Lobos. The they Lobos opened for the Blasters at the Whiskey A Go Go one night and kind of obliterated the whole scene, not just the venue, but they obliterated it. They obliterated everybody and everything in it. So we uh, we became friends, and then I guess two years later, I was in the band. <laughs> uh, but before that was uh, I was in a band called The Plugs that became uh, Tito and the Tarantulas, and I think there was another name after that as well. But I was now, were the these all in the West Coast as well? Yeah, this this was all in L.A. I oh. I, I basically moved to L.A. and fuck, what was it seventy okay. five? Um, so I was just uh, I, I you know I, I was sort of around. I, I, there weren't a lot of sax players in the scene back then, so I was kind of lucky. I got to. I got the right. people guy for a while. Right. So because obviously with the saxophone, it's real synonymous with a lot of the uh, old time rock and roll, obviously, because when you hear a lot of the 50s style, there's always that sax, you know, getting yeah. game there, you know. But and, I was playing. I mean, I was, you know, I was playing like punk rock and other like crazy shit. So it wasn't <laughs> really wasn't doing much 50s stuff in that era. <laughs> a lot of more outside stuff. But oh. I, that I was great. kind of doing everything. I mean, it wasn't, you know, I was just, I was happy to be there. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's badass. So when, okay, so when, when joining Los Lobos, obviously you guys started um, working on different materials. So when, what, what would you call, I don't, I don't want to say this. What would, what would you say is the most challenging Lobos record that you produced or were a part of? You know, because I mean, you guys kick out a lot of cool stuff. But what would be the what would you say was like the most challenging? So I was I, I co-produced the uh, first two records, and then the, the La Bamba soundtrack, and then after that, we kind of figured out that we, you know, like everybody was, you know, it was sort of like those first couple of records. Everybody had to figure out, you know, what the studio was and how to how to act, and then once they kind of solved that, it was like it really didn't, you know. I mean, we had producers after that, but you know, I I was, you know. My role in as much as the 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 guy who knew a little bit more about it was didn't you know they didn't really need that anymore they kind of figured it all out on their own gotcha, gotcha. Um, but in terms of i mean uh, i mean I, the ones that i did i can't say that anything was really that challenging i mean even the la bamba soundtrack was kind of fun you know it was um i mean there's it was uh it was a lot of work i mean it was they kept changing the script uh you know they they the, the literally like every day the script would change and every day they would say all right well we want to we want you to do donna and make it sound like like you're in a high school gym oh no we want to make it sound like he's in the car no make it sound like he's in the garage now make it sound like you know like literally like every day <laughs> would change the the whole thing uh, on us yeah so but, but that was you know it was an interesting challenge you know it, was, it wasn't uh I, I you know in the moment if you would have asked me back then i probably would have complained about it but you know looking back on it, it really wasn't uh I mean, I've had much more challenging situations in the studio than that. You, were, you know, it's just sort of right. like you just had to creatively figure out how to make things sound like what the script was calling for. Right. So now, okay, so building off of the La Bamba soundtrack, uh, which is one of my favorites of all time, obviously, along with the movie, and I'm sure a lot of people watching can <laughs> can agree with that as well. Um, how is that working with uh, a bunch of different um, artists and different things that are going on? putting together a movie soundtrack like that. I mean, I, like, uh, I, I was only responsible for the lowest portion, which as you know, you know, okay. it's a huge, you know, like it, gotcha. every, every time you heard Richie's voice, that was I, something I had produced. Uh, okay. But I didn't have to deal with uh, like Brian Setzer or the, you know, the Marshall Crenshaw. I mean, the, they all, the, all that stuff was handled by whoever produced those records. So uh, I was just responsible for, for our stuff and then putting it all together and like, you know, kind of, you know, compiling it into a record, but I didn't produce anybody but Lobos. 
Awesome. Awesome. Okay, man. That is, because again, did, man, that's like, an record, I, also, I did not, Mitchell Froome produced the, the single. I did not produce this, the single. Oh, so you didn't produce the actual La Bamba? I didn't produce it. Uh, no, I, I produced okay. the version in the movie, but the, uh, the, the, the one on the album, <laughs> excuse me, the one that was on the album, uh -huh. <laughs> the one that was a big hit was produced by Mitchell Froome, who is also a, a genius. Excellent. Excellent. I excellent. I learned everything I know about producing from him. Nice, yeah. nice. So the um, so with all of that, I mean, because obviously, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys even knew that it was going to be a big of a hit as it was. Um, it was I mean, literally it, when I tell you that that the idea that it was going to be a hit would you could I would have bet everything I had that it wasn't because it was just so it was so disorganized. Like as it was, you know, like, as they were making it. You know, like I said, like the, the script kept changing. Um, they didn't cast Sam uh, Lou Diamond Phillips. They didn't cast Richie until they had shot the entire every scene that they that didn't involve Richie. They had shot because they couldn't find Richie. They, they started the movie. They figured they'd find the guy, right. and it was like months. It took them months to find Lou Diamond Phillips or somebody who could creditably play uh, Richie Valens. So it was it was kind of a mess. And then like the script was changing, and then. You know, you think about it, there's a movie with no stars, like nobody in that movie was anything close to a star, directed by a guy who had never made a movie before. Right. Um, with, you know, about a kid who wrote 16 songs and tragically passed away. I mean, it was, you, you know, it doesn't really sound like a recipe for a, a international, worldwide star. Right, right. Really. A blockbuster, yeah, exactly. And as we were working on it, you know, it was like, it was very, you know, was typically, you know, I imagine, I mean, most of the movies that we worked on, they're disorganized until they're done. You know, like there's always things changing and, you know, stuff happening. So it was, uh, and then, you know, like the, it was also like, there was a much, much longer version of the movie that we were working on for the most part. And then like right at the end, they, they cut out all the, all the fluff. I mean, it was just, there was a lot of like unnecessary subplots and, and stuff that really didn't matter. And right. very wisely, they cut about 25 minutes of it out uh, right before the, you know, it was released, which made it, I think that's what really made a difference. Had it been, the longer version, I'm not sure if it would have been such a big hit. Wow. But I remember the last day, so the last time, last day that I worked on it, I, I was in the editing, the video editing, you know, they were actually, you know, putting the soundtrack in the picture. And, and I, it was like the, like I had seen it, you know, 100, 250, you know, I, I'd, I'd seen like the scenes we were working on and I'd yeah, see yeah. like stuff put together, but like I had probably didn't see the whole, I probably saw watched the whole thing i don't know maybe five times just as we were working on it and then when i saw the very last version when they had cut out all like the, all the subplots and all the like there was a lot of really stupid stuff that they uh that they cut out of the movie in my opinion <clears throat> um i was like wow this is it's not bad i remember <laughs> I said to myself it's a shame nobody's ever going to see this <laughs> And, and you know what's funny is like I wonder how many out of, out of the building it was at Paramount I think on on yeah. Melrose in, in Hollywood I was like ah, that's too bad no one's ever going to see this stupid thing right and I wonder how many people actually think that when they're a part of a project you know they think oh know. nobody's going to watch this or nobody's going to listen to this and I've been I've been wrong before you know I it just, <laughs> you know, I mean there's no uh, you know if it was easy then you know <laughs> everybody could do it you know it's yeah just, yeah yeah really you never, know, that is... you never know what's going to work you never know what what people are going to respond to. <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> what people are going to respond to. And like, you know, obviously it's a really powerful movie and soulful and the performances right. are great. And, you know, Lou Davin Phillips, you know, he kind of knocks it out of the park. I mean, it was all, it was all meant to be, but as you know, back behind the scenes, it was, it was a big mess. And, you know, we got into some tips with the, with Luis Valdez, the director, like, you know, just okay. direction wise and, you know, what he wanted from us sometimes was beyond our ability to deliver. Right, so, right. Um, it was just, uh, you know, like I said, just very, I, I guess it's normal for anything that involves that many people and a lot of moving parts. You know, and obviously in retrospect, everybody looks like a genius, but in a moment, it was anything but. Yeah, no, I can imagine. You know, the hecticness and all of that. Uh, yeah, it's great. That, what could have came along with it? No, no, that's 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 great. So you guys have been back on the road, yep. and how has that been uh, adjusting to the the new guidelines? You know. Um, you know, per the pandemic, I mean, as far as uh, venues and obviously the travel, I mean, how is that? How have you guys, how have you guys adjusted to the new way of, uh, of enjoying it's, concerts? It's been uh, a challenge, I guess, 
you know, but pleasant. I mean, we've been really, really lucky. Knock on wood. You know, like we, like we haven't had a, you know, we had one scare for a minute that, you know, we were, uh, somebody got exposed and we had to deal with that, but you know, we're all vaccinated and we're insisting that everybody that comes to the show is vaccinated and masked. <clears throat> and so far, so far people have been, um, very respectful of that. And, you know, we go out of our, out of our way to thank them and, just you know we say you know if you keep doing this there'll be more shows if you don't then there won't so just you know let's all play let's all do this the right way and uh, we've been lucky like we haven't there's been no issues um uh and uh you know we've obviously you know we've kept our backstage access limited which upsets some of our friends but you know it's just how it has to be we you know we we just uh, right. we have to protect ourselves and our crew and Everybody it's around us. So, yeah. yeah. So it's just, it's, it's different, but you know, we're playing music and it's, uh, and people are there and it's, and it's great. So it's, I got, you know, uh, the way I look at it is every show is a blessing. Like every time we get to do it and nothing weird happens, it's great. Cause it, you know, we have had a couple things like we've had to cancel a couple shows because the one reason or another, the, either the venue was non-compliant or that they, they had had a scare and they had to shut it down. And mm, um, okay. so, you know, it's it's clearly not like <coughs> so, sir. It's not exactly like it used to be, but it's uh, right. it's pretty darn good. Right. Yeah. So again, because I mean, obviously, a lot of the venues are starting to require vaccination. I would hope that they all do. I there's no yeah. reason not to. I mean, there's absolutely it's idiotic to think that you know you could walk into a room full of people and and not be vaccinated and wear masks. So no, it's. I think it's uh, it's the right thing to do, and I, I think uh, you know. Sorry, any, any vaxxers out there, but you're out of your fucking mind. you know, speak it. The only, way, the only way this goes away is if we we get vaccinated. So just shut up. Or... Very true. Yeah, no, you got to be uh, got to be mindful of all that, and then of course, if they're not um, compliant, then don't go anywhere. I guess. With yeah, just stay home. <laughs> yeah, just stay. Yeah. Don't fly. Don't travel. Don't go to a show. Just you know, enjoy your your. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah, man. Definitely. Yeah. So anybody. Okay. So I, I'm not sure if there's any questions. Anybody got any questions for Steve? I don't know if there was a anybody <clears throat> on here. I'm going to let that build up here for oh, a quick second. Yeah, at this. They want to know what's, I don't know. I, I, I use this, you know, this is sort of a stage shot here. I mean, I just, this is my vinyl yeah, collection. vinyl collection there. Yeah. Talk about that, man. <laughs> Random, randomly uh, talking heads, uh, weather report, Coleman Hawkins, uh, Jackie Wilson and Count Basie. That's a rare one right there, man. Ooh, man. Oh, yeah, that, that's a valuable record right there. Just that, that, this is amazing, by the way. Yeah, I, you know, I was I was a, I, I'm a I, I like vinyl. Clearly. Okay, so you're an avid collector of vinyl. Okay, so what is the uh I, I, you know what I, I mean, actually though, but I'm not I, I have to say I'm I I, I had to stop. I, you know, I, I it's just like after a while <laughs> It got silly, and you know, like my suitcase is already like fifty pounds. So, like the idea of like <laughs> ten pounds of vinyl is like just not happening. Yeah, but, no, no, yeah. Plus, man, I mean, I, I've got. I mean, this let's look. It goes on for a while, so it's like you know. Yeah, I was just going to say that alone is just lots I haven't listened to, and you know, so I'm, I'm not. I mean, listen, I I love listening to vinyl, and I love I love that it's a thing now, and I love that uh, you right. know the records that I produce that are. You know, vinyl's a thing, and we, you know, we we, we take a lot of care, and and uh, you know, we try and make the vinyl as good as it could possibly be. So, I mean, that part of it, I'm totally down with. But I'm not. I I, I had to stop, you know, acquiring. It just didn't. I just don't have the. I don't acquire. I'm trying not to acquire anything. I'm trying to actually divest myself. <laughs> stuff. So, is there is there is like there a vinyl? Record. Is there a piece of vinyl out there that you don't own yet that you're looking to obtain? Uh -huh. Sometime uh, or someday in the future. That's an interesting question. Or is that uh, a is that a dumb question? Because it looks like you do uh, pretty much everything in the back there. But... <laughs> nothing, you know, I mean, like there's the people that you know, there's records I love and stuff like that. But I don't, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm just not that of that mindset. You know, I'm just not. I have friends that are that are you know, vinyl hounds, and they go to swap meets and and they do all that stuff. But uh, I'm not, and it's uh, I'm I'm content with my collection and. Right. The, okay. the joy of the internet and people like turning over, you know, like finding, you know, crazy archive stuff that no one knew existed. And you yeah, know, kind of or my, you know, like I'm more excited about, you know, like finding weird, yeah. like Bernie Coleman, you know, club dates than I am. They're like trying to find some weird vinyl record that I'm going to have to pay a hundred bucks to hear. 
you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely true. Definitely true. What um what other things do you have coming up? Obviously, besides the uh, the shows, is there any other production yeah, projects working, that you have on the plate? Working on a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, a couple of things I did earlier this year just came out. Uh, there's a band called Southern Avenue from uh, Memphis that just came out. That's pretty cool. I, I highly recommend. They're uh, really just really remarkably cool band um you'd love them they're like r&b like memphis r&b not i would say old school but they're not really old school it's kind of like new school r&b okay um and what else uh record with a woman named erin mckeon spelled m erin e-r-i-n uh, m-c-k-e-o-w-n okay uh, her record just came out on friday i'm really that's that's a really cool record i'm really proud of and then i'm i'm working on uh I'm working on a record um, with a band called The Common Heart from uh, Pittsburgh. So I was just working on that, but when on my on my way home today from uh, Pittsburgh, I was working on that last week. And then uh, what else? I got. I'm starting a record in Austin in a couple of weeks with a guy named um, uh, Lonnie Trevino Jr., who's a really okay. cool, talented dude. Nice, nice. But, yeah. So and then, and I know you and I have spoke about this before. So because I mean you have an eclectic taste of music. I mean, obviously you work with, you've produced like a little super seven in Ozomali, but then like you're saying, you're doing something with Southern Avenue. I mean, so is there, I mean, bottom line is that if you're going to take on a production project, I mean, they just, it's just got to be good shit in the end. Right. That's I mean, pretty much my real style that you're picky yeah. about. Right. That's, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't, as long as it's intriguing and they got something to say and it's, uh, you know, music's, uh, well written and well sung, and uh, it it interests me on some level. I'm, I'm I'll make I'll find a way to make it happen. Nice, nice. That is great, man. So there is one last thing I got to ask, man. So earlier this week, I asked some people like like some tour stories or like what is the etiquette? Because I know you guys earlier on. I mean, I'm sure you guys did a lot of road trips and such. Um, yeah. What is the etiquette that you guys took when napping on the road? Like, do you stay awake so the driver stays awake? Do uh, you guys <laughs> take turns? I mean, how how did that happen early on? Uh, well, I let's say, well, in Lobos, I'm the only guy that I trust to actually drive. If it's, <laughs> if it's actually not a, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like none of the guy, like this is what it's like. The other guys in the band pretend they don't know how to drive. <laughs> if they literally <laughs> pretend that they've never driven before, so they we have to like get them like someone to drive them like like literally like a mile like the other night the other day like we were playing some show is like like not even a mile from the show like an easy walk but they had to find somebody to drive them because the guys didn't want to drive themselves so it's kind of a pain in the ass <laughs> to put it uh, we, but we have a, like our t-shirt guy drives a lot um you know we, we've made our drummers like our you know we, we've had a collection of drummers over the years yeah, and unfortunately, like part of the job of being drummer in Los Lobos, is you also have to drive. <laughs> yeah, it's not oh, like it's that's great. Got, like the most physical job on stage, and they have to drive for five hours to get there. And <laughs> so, you know, so it's kind of sucks, you know. My, I, I I feel really bad when that happens, and you know, I've, I've I you know this last trip, uh, it was down to him and me, so I drove quite a bit, but. Uh, Nap, the nap awesome. thing, you know, it, it'd be one thing if we shared the workload, but obviously, as I mentioned, we're not sharing the workload at all. So, right, uh, I'll just, there's very little napping. You know, the only napping happens behind the wheel, and that's not fun. <laughs> oh so, man, that is that is awesome. Yeah. All right, yeah. Steve, man. Well, we're gonna wind this down. I could talk to you all night, man, but I know you gotta. You're gonna go and relax. I know you guys have been on the road, and yeah. you guys got a couple of days off. And where where do you guys uh you guys play this weekend? Right. Yeah. So this weekend, uh, so Friday is uh, in Solana Beach at the Belly Up. Oh, nice. One of our nice. favorite places to play. It's a great, great venue. Nice. Yeah, and, definitely. And, uh, Saturday, we're in Bisbee, Arizona, where I don't, I think it's one of the very few places where we haven't been before. Okay. Okay. As far as I can recall, I, I don't remember ever being in Bisbee. So that's Saturday. And then, uh, and then what? The next week is uh, two nights in Santa Barbara uh thursday friday in santa barbara and then uh i should know this stuff um there's another show attached to that but if one. you know maybe the the guy that's driving might know it all man so that's, that's uh, <laughs> well i hope so uh, <laughs> we almost had a thing where we actually for the one of the very few times this like literally just like two days ago where 
we were uh, we were on our way to a gig, but we were staying in another city. Like we were, we we played the gig, and we were off to uh, we were driving. Like the, it was a long drive. Like the the show was in State College, Pennsylvania, and the sh the next show was in Albany, New York. So it's like roughly seven hours. So we we played the show, and then we drove. We were going to drive to uh, to a hotel like halfway. And uh, Alfredo Ortiz, our new driver, Alfredo Ortiz, who's amazing. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I knew. You know, like and he's just kind of learning the ropes, and you know, like he was pointing the van towards the hotel, which would have been <laughs> like six hours out of the way. <laughs> and I was like, you know, just like I was ready to just like you know get in my shit, like wasn't going to pay attention. I was, I was like, Fredo, do you know where you're going? Like, yeah, man, I'm just let's get here, and we're going to you know like this thing. And they, dude, that's that's the hotel tonight. No, the gig is five hours that way <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, how wow. we, that's how it's very famously like early on we there was a show in uh we were going from new york to providence rhode island with our our our, our former road manager uh, mouse de la luz sadly okay. passed away and mouse was a nut like he was just he was a crazy crazy dude and so we you know new york city we all we, we were you know we rampaged well into the night and so we're all sacked out and you know mouse is driving and it's 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 winter time and it's dark and you know we're it's you know we left new york in the in like noon and we're supposed to get to the club at five and it's dark and i'm like you know we're all just like you know hung over like and mouse goes is it possible to be in hartford connecticut without going through <laughs> without going through rhode island and like we're all sleeping I'm like like what who's talking like what <laughs> I say what I'm in the back, like what? And Moss goes, "Oh, nothing." I was just wondering, is it possible to get to Hartford, Connecticut, without going through? And he, there's two, it's the 95 and the 91 split outside of Hartford, and he took the 91, and we were, we were in Hartford, <laughs> Connecticut. We we're supposed to be in 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 uh, Providence, Rhode Island. It was oh man! With like literally like an hour to spare. When we made, you know, we we were a little late, but we we pulled the show off. But anyway, oh, wow, that's that great, man. It happens. Yeah, definitely, man. I could. Oh God, I mean, that's uh, those tour stories, man. You could probably go on for days with yeah, that. Stuff. You know, they're probably <laughs> it's not really in, intimately invested in it. Yeah, but, no, no, man. That's a uh, that's awesome. All right, Steve. Well, right, once again, dude, thank you. My pleasure, dude. For coming Good on the show, you, man. man. And uh, good to and, see. You. Uh, let's keep in contact, man. Definitely. Yeah, dude. Yeah, absolutely. All right, my man. Okay, so you have a good right. one, and we'll talk soon, brother. All right, man. Okay. Good evening, man. Right on, man. That was awesome. That was very cool. Very cool. Hope everybody watching enjoyed that uh, that uh, breakdown and interview and uh, talk with Steve, man. That was way cool. Man, really, really cool. That's nice right that he's on. going to Bisbee. That's super cool. Yeah, I've been to Bisbee. Okay, so you guys, you guys know where that's at? Or from oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bisbee's the bomb. <laughs> right on. They call it a Mayberry on acid. <laughs> that's right what? That's their town yeah. motto. Mayberry on acid you got hippies and you got bikers and a bunch of get along and lots ghosts. of ghosts i think we should road trip kind of and go check oh, out it's the fun. show it's great I town i love it he's <laughs> fun man yep man that is awesome that is awesome all right so we've got um some information to share of some yes. of events coming up on the one we've got coming up what, what, on uh, what, what? october 4th this monday so let's talk to him about it there, Robster. Do the mm. things, Rob. Ta da ta ta. Yes. Ba, ba, ba. Green Chili Kickback, Monday, October 4th. And that is going to be happening here at the world famous Two River Cider Company here in Sacramento. And you can check out uh, the information online at the Two River Cider Company.com, right? Is that Two River Cider or Two River Cider? Whatever it is, I think. Is two Riversider.com. Two, two, two Riversider.com. And you can uh, purchase tickets right there. It goes by table reservation. So you can see there that $15 tab is uh, seats, what, three people, guys? Is that what it three, is? Three. Three top for 15, six yeah. for 30. Yeah, six people for 30 on one table. And uh, Rob, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to be. Uh, you, Rob. Oh, you I, can't hear me. There we there go. You there go. go. <laughs> All I was saying is there's going to be a GA at the door as well, so don't be afraid to you know. Oh yeah, to come by yourself or come with a partner. Um, so you, as you can see, this is like the Zia flag. This is uh, the New Mexican flag behind there. Um, myself, 
and Mr. Science and Mr. Mosca are all from New Mexico. Um, yeah. We have a huge contingent of New Mexicans out here. Um, we put green chili on everything, and we actually Diaper found thing. a chili roaster in the Diaper, area. Diaper rash, green side. chili powder. Diaper rash, is that what you said? <laughs> put green chili Diaper on everything. Rash. Don't, yeah. listen him, <laughs> Don't listen to them, folks. Don't listen to them. Bring that baby powder to the event, man. <laughs> We're crazy. We're crazy, eh? We got El Rey out roasting chili. <clears throat> Yummy. For. Out of Woodland. Uh, he's out in Woodland. He goes to the farmer's markets out there. If you've never so smelled roasting green chilies, mm, it's amazing. It out. He's got mm. family in Deming, so he has it overnighted. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. And then he roasts it the next day at the farmer's market, which I think the last uh, the last roasting he did was this past weekend. So, And that's the uh, the farmer's market out in Woodland, right? In Woodland, yes. Okay, Correct. okay. Awesome. Down, down, He's going to be down. live at Two Rivers roasting. So, awesome. So yeah, one secret one roasting happening Many, many on things that will be offered there. And look at that, man. Oh, that burger looks delicious. delicious. Alley, confusion alley. If you haven't had a green chili mm. cheeseburger. Mm. You gotta come get one. Gotta yeah, that's rock your be, socks off. Be tasty, and then uh, we're gonna have some entertainment, though, right, guys? We're gonna have some entertainment. Yeah, talk yes, about sir. the uh, the headlining act. That's gonna be. Uh, oh boy! Who's our doing homies? It? Go for it, Marco. Tell them about our homies. So, uh, nosotros from Albuquerque, Santa Fe, and uh, a lot of these guys we went to school with out in New Mexico: Dennis, Randy, uh, Jesse. You guys don't know who they are. We know who they really? are. So I'm just <laughs> All the, these are Ronnie, friends. Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gil, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. So a couple of these guys, uh, we played in a reggae group back down in Las Cruces called Liquid Cheese, oddly enough. And Gil was our bass player, guitar player, DJ, rapper. He did everything, man. Guys, multi, multi-talented. Yeah, Gil, 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 Gilbert spins awesome. a lot of plates. Yeah. Yeah. And so Dennis uh, played with in a jazz combo with Dennis back in my early days in college, and we all, you know, it's just this small little community that we've just branched out and brought more people in. And nosotros are amazing. You, they got Latin, Latin rock, salsa, cumbia. If you guys are down with the cumbia, they play all the cumbias. Yeah, man, that's uh, um, and they're bringing the nine piece band. They're bringing the full band. Oh, Those people the nine used piece. To they're bringing. We yeah, thought they were just bringing the scale. Down. They can barely they fit the pictures. Let's they see actually, how they fit on the stage. They you know? actually so. can't. There's actually a couple <laughs> in the wings. Yeah, there's a few. Gonna be a good time though. Yeah. No, it is going to be fun, and you know, and I hope uh, folks that are watching, listening, however you're get your, tuning uh, into this show, I hope tickets. you guys come out and show them how Sacramento supports. Tickets are doing very well. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been checking out the uh, the ticket link on Event B, and and they're doing really well. So I suggest, uh, awesome. yeah, you man, guys get your cool. your tables. Otherwise, yeah, it's just going to be standing room. That. Definitely hurry that up, man. So that's going to be really cool, and. Um, Hey, look at look, hey, look, 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 look at those guys. Look, I've heard of those guys. a large yeah, shirt. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a medium. I was going to say it's a petite. <laughs> petite. <laughs> Big oh, bones. man. Bought it from the toddler section, you know? It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's going to be fun, man. We're going to be having a good time. I mean, we're going to be opening it up with uh, our little, you know, little brass set going on, some busking, and, you know, just going to have a good time. And I, And again, I hope. Um, some Sacramento folks are just come on out and support the event and uh, show our brothers from New Mexico that we can get down, man. And we can, yeah. If there's some any salseros love. out in Sacramento that are yeah. listening or watching. Oh, this is, uh, and then also nice there. um, there's a specialty cider being released, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah man. We're going to have uh, the debut of the Peligro cider. We're excited about mm. that. Really yeah, excited. It's got a, it's got some, you know, some of that agave lime um, stuff going on there. So much love to Vince mm. and the Two River Cider Company yes. for um, throwing our name on our hell yeah cider, man. That's cool. It's going to be cool, <laughs> man. So come out and uh, taste. Give it a taste, and we'll be more than happy to taste along with you. Tell all your New Mexican friends that are in Sacramento. They don't want to miss this one. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. No, yeah. So once again, the green chili kick back. This yeah. Monday, Even if Monday you're not from New Friday. Mexico. You don't have yeah. to be from New Mexico to. Yeah, no, they a, don't. But tell them because they want to be here. But if you have a New Mexico <laughs> driver's license, show it at the door and like, <clears throat> hook you up with a cider. You we'll know? Hook you up with a high five. <laughs> <laughs> and an all sick, bro. All sick. Yeah. Hook up with man. one of these. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> also, I just want to mention something real quick. 
Um, there is a vinyl and collectible sale. We were talking earlier with Steve about vinyl. Um, friend of mine, and also friends of Steve's, by the way. Um, and then there's, oh man, I wish I would have talk, talked to him about this. Did you guys know that Steve also did some production work for Jackie Green, who's a local oh, crazy. Um, yeah. guy as well? So um, Marty DeAnda, old friend of mine, he's having a vinyl and collectible sale over at 1600 Sutterville Road. And isn't it just right here around the corner? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that. yeah. Yeah. This Saturday from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. So if you're into vinyl and collectibles, because he has his own shop there on the R Street Corridor as well. So check him out. Show him some love. And, cool. um, and then our next guest is going to be Chris Amaral, who is the drummer for the Nickel Slots, and that's going to be on October 14th. So looking forward to that, man. Right on, guys. Hell yeah. Sweet. This was this was really cool. Can we get a hell yeah? We can get a hell yeah. Let's try that again. Let's hell yeah. Right on. Yeah. Man. <laughs> and, that, and that hell yeah is brought to you by none other than Henry Lozano's Garage Oldie Show in Central California. <laughs> yeah right on that. guys man it's been a pleasure seeing you guys again so yeah do we want to throw out some no out for the people in and um i'm sorry if i didn't get to see comments and such i'll reply to that this evening or tomorrow and uh and once again thanks again to steve berlin from Rules. yes Rules. go go i don't think he, he doesn't have social media though so just uh you know he he's hearing this. hit up his website hit up his website yes. go Send to a show now um, that to you, a show. you saw him here subscribe yeah. to sessions all right everybody you guys have a good evening sleep well and we'll see you in two weeks yeah. see if the, Rob, see gonna, intro music works ready yeah see. you're gonna hit out some good. shout out some musica, some nosotros. Oh, <laughs> Next. oh yeah, Next. yeah, 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 yeah. okay it's all good though you know what though this yeah, has yeah. been the story of this show is like once something else is wet well, there's always little glitches but hey we'll make it on. right on yeah all right guys till the next time adios be safe Bye-bye. They watch your camacho. Bye-bye.